on a prayer. Faith is Awaken by Elton Thomas, Episode 2, Vanished Without a Trace. Dusty sat in his car at the edge of the neighborhood, staring out at the stretch of worn-out buildings, dilapidated storefronts, and flickering streetlights. The sun was beginning to set, casting a golden hue across the streets of St. Louis, but here, in this corner of the city, the light barely touched. Shadows lingered in the alleys, and the faint hum of distant traffic felt far away, disconnected from the lives being lived just beneath the surface. Mila Suero's last known location was here, in this neighborhood that had been forgotten by the rest of the city. Dusty scanned the street, his eyes sharp, taking in the details. Boarded up windows, graffiti scrawled across brick walls, the hollow faces of men and women lingering on the corners, eyes empty but watchful. It wasn't just poverty here. It was a place where people vanished, where girls like Mila disappeared, swallowed by the darkness that no one wanted to see. Dusty's fingers gripped the steering wheel, the leather creaking beneath his hands. He had read the report a dozen times before getting into his car, memorized every detail. Mila had been walking home with her mother, Maria, when it happened. One moment, the little girl was beside her, and the next, gone. No screams, no struggle, just gone like the wind had carried her away. The police report had been frustratingly thin, as if the officers knew how this would end. They had classified it as a probable runaway, but Dusty knew better. A girl like Mila didn't run away. She was taken. Dusty exhaled slowly, forcing himself to relax his grip on the wheel. His mind raced with possibilities, the familiar tension building in his chest. Every second that passed without finding Mila was a second closer to her being lost forever. The city was vast, and the networks that trafficked girls like her were even bigger. He knew the statistics. The longer she stayed missing, the harder it would be to find her. He shoved the car door open and stepped out onto the cracked asphalt. The air was thick with humidity, carrying with it the scent of smoke and decay. His boots crunched against broken glass as he walked, the sound echoing in the otherwise quiet street. Dusty had learned long ago to keep his eyes moving to never stop scanning the surroundings. The world was full of people who hid in plain sight, and in neighborhoods like this, the predators often blended in with the prey. He made his way down the street, past a group of teenagers loitering by a liquor store. They watched him warily, their conversations halting as he passed. Dusty didn't give them more than a glance. He knew the types who lingered in places like this, but they weren't his target today. No, he was after something else something far more dangerous than a group of kids with too much time and too little direction. Mila had disappeared, and Dusty knew the statistics. After 48 hours, the chances of recovering a missing child dropped significantly, and after 72 hours, it plummeted. But Dusty didn't believe in statistics, not when it came to cases like these. His gut told him she was still out there, somewhere, waiting to be found. And his gut had rarely been wrong. He reached the alley where Mila had last been seen. The place was deserted, save for a few garbage bags ripped open and spilling their contents onto the sidewalk. Dusty crouched down, his eyes narrowing as he examined the ground. He wasn't expecting to find much, not after three days, but it was habit. He had learned to look for the smallest details, the things others missed. A broken piece of jewelry, a torn fabric, a smear of dirt in the wrong place. Anything could be a clue. But there was nothing here. Just the silence of the alley, the faint drip of water from a nearby drain, and the overwhelming sense of absence. Dusty stood and rubbed the back of his neck, frustration gnawing at him. There had to be something he was missing. There was always something. He walked further down the alley, his senses on high alert, when he noticed movement from the corner of his eye. A man, thin and hunched, emerged from behind a dumpster. His clothes were ragged, his face gaunt and unshaven. He moved slowly, as though the weight of the world was pressing down on him. Dusty stopped, watching the man's approach. Hey! Dusty called out, his voice low but firm. The man glanced up, his eyes dull, but there was something there, an awareness, a recognition that Dusty wasn't just another passerby. Who's asking? The man mumbled, his voice rough from disuse. Dusty rhymes. I'm looking for a girl. Eight years old. Mila Suero. You seen her? 
The man blinked, his expression flickering with something Dusty couldn't quite read. He hesitated, then shrugged. Kids go missing all the time around here. Dusty took a step closer, his gaze hardening. I know, but I'm not leaving without answers. The man's shoulders sagged and he leaned against the wall, wiping a hand across his face. Look, man, this neighborhood, you think people care? They see a kid, they look the other way. Ain't nothing new. Dusty didn't flinch. He had heard it all before. The indifference, the hopelessness. But it wasn't good enough. Tell me what you know. He pressed, his tone unwavering. The man's eyes shifted to the ground. The other night, there was a van. Black, no plates. Pulled up right around here, middle of the night. I saw a man grab a kid, real quick, no noise. Threw her in the back and drove off. Dusty's heart pounded in his chest, but his expression remained calm. What did the man look like? The man shook his head. Didn't get a good look. Big guy, though. Real fast. Didn't stick around. Dusty nodded, piecing together the story. It wasn't much, but it was something. A black van with no plates. It was enough to start. Thanks, he said, turning to leave. Hey, the man called after him his voice low and rasping. You find that kid. You bring her back, all right? Dusty looked over his shoulder, his face unreadable. I plan to. As Dusty walked away, the darkness of the alley seemed to cling to him, but he didn't let it sink in. He had a lead, and now he needed to move fast. Time was running out, but as long as there was still hope, Dusty wouldn't stop. He climbed back into his car, the engine roaring to life as he pulled away from the curb. His hands were steady on the wheel, his mind already calculating his next move. Mila Suero had vanished without a trace, but Dusty wasn't one to give up. Not when there was still a chance, however slim, to bring her home.